Welcome back to the workshop. Been a while between drinks uh, and the car still isn't painted. But plenty of work has been going on in preparation. Uh, it's just most of that work involved an angle grinder and a wire brush. Not the most exciting uh, viewing experience. All that's done now, so uh, let me take you around and uh, show you what we've done. We've cleaned up the entire interior, including the roll cage, taken everything back to bare metal and sprayed it with etch primer. And then I've gone around and uh, seam sealed where required. It was very nice to see it all turn into one colour, even if it is just... Same story up the front, uh, also pop riveted in those side panels so they're semi-permanent and have finally fiberglassed that gigantic hole that was in the firewall. The roof has also had some attention and I am pleased to say that the uh, air scoop is now actually centralised in the roof. Same story up the back and have also pop riveted and uh, sealed in um, that rear firewall. So plenty of other things have happened, patching up little holes here and there. Uh, mucking around with lights and exterior stuff, just making sure that all those little bits and pieces are all buttoned up so that hopefully once the thing is painted, it all just bolts straight together. Uh, but enough of that, um, let's go and do some work. So I've ordered the new springs and dampers and like everything else on the car, they need to be custom made. So to save a bit of time and money, I am going to machine up the top mounting plate for the rear struts. This mounting plate will have a big spherical bearing and the rear strut will bolt into that and that mounting plate will bolt onto the chassis mounts that we uh, modified earlier. So we'll start off with this big block of aluminium. So put a center punch mark uh, in the center of our plate uh, and I'll just line up the plate in the four jaw based off that center punch mark. Um, so we're to mill the edges and the outside perimeter is not critical at all. So you don't have to watch me muck around with the uh, dial indicator for half an hour. It's given us a hole somewhere at some dimension and uh, we want it on centre at uh, 30 millimetres. Now we need to machine the uh, cavity for the bearing. Uh, it needs to be in inset 20 millimetres from this face. I've got a bit of shim stock uh, against the tool here. And then down here I've set up my very sophisticated um, depth stop. So I've got two bits of aluminium here that are um, 10 mil each, so that's 20 mil. And I've set the stop up to that, wind that out. So now we should have 20 mil minus that bit of shim stock up the top um, to leave us some room to uh, clean up the back face once we've uh, got our correct depth. <laughs> So the bore is now measuring up at 33.85 and we want 34.89. So I've got the dial set up so that if we get to zero, uh, we should be bang on. So that's one millimeter plus 0 0.02 of a millimeter, I hope. So I'm gonna do that in two passes of about 0.5 mil each pass. 
So that last cut looks like it's come up really well, but just to double check, I've made a, a stack out of uh, this nice little gauge block set of the size we're after. And there's the stack of, uh, of gauge blocks to get our size of 34.89 or 88, I think I've got. Uh, and this is the telescopic gauge that I've taken out of the bore and we are pretty much bang on. Well, we are bang on. Happy with that? Move on. So smashed in the uh, groove for the circlip. Uh, I think we're done for the bearing. So now we can flip it over and uh, remove some of this mass. So as I said, the next order of operation is to uh, take some mass out of this. Basically we want to thin this whole plate down, leaving a, a boss at the top here. Um, so still need to hold it in the fore jaw, uh, but need it to be proud enough from the, the end of the jaw so that we machine off the appropriate amount of material. Um, the depth of the jaws was too, too deep, um, and so I've still got a face to um, set it all up on, or set the block up on. I super glued these blocks of aluminium to the jaws, uh, gave it a quick facing cut with the, uh, the cutter, and now I've got a depth from here to here of about nine and a half mil, and we need to take off, um, we need to leave 10 mil of space. So uh, that allows us um, half a mil um, before we run into the jaws with the cutter, which uh, I've never done before. So flipped it up the other way. Now concentricity isn't critical here. It's not like it's a running fit or anything, but I still would like to get it uh, nice and close so that the boss is, is centralized to the, uh, the bearing cavity. I've set it up using the, um, the live center just to uh, as a starting point and it's not too bad but we can we can do better I think the next thing we'll do is uh, clean up these edges and um, machine it to size. I've um, set up this one, two, three block um, with the dial indicator so I know that it's square to the table. So I'm just going to use that as a reference face and then clamp this down and machine each edge. Last operation uh, is to drill the mounting holes, but of course I don't want mounting holes, I want mounting slots to give me a little bit of camber adjustment um, just to make life difficult. So back in the mill, slightly different setup because I need access to the centre bore to centre the unit or at least centre the DRO on the unit uh, because that's where all the dimensions come from uh, to mill the slots. Also, uh, the setup with just a single bolt, although it was nice and simple, um, I did have some issues with the movement. It wasn't quite firm enough. Got away with it, but uh, this is a much neater setup, or at least a, a more rigid setup. I don't know about neater. Uh, and I've got access, I think, to all of the uh, slots I need to mill, so hopefully I can do all this in one operation. I've centered it already with the dial indicator. Um, I won't do a round the world trip with the camera this time. You'll just have to trust me that it's nice and centered. Um, and because this is a teeny tiny little mill, uh, I'm going to drill out as much material before I assault the uh, eight millimeter end mill by trying to create some slots. So let's drill some holes. 
No, oh, I so nearly just turned the mill on with the indicator on. <laughs> that would have been fun. Don't, ah, I nearly did it again. Should also point out that uh, this little paper template is purely a reference uh, just to reduce the chances of me stuffing up reading off the DRO. I'll still stuff up reading off the DRO. This will just reduce the chances of that happening. I do actually have some dimensions. As you may have noticed, when I built the rest of the exhaust, we're going to be running two oxygen sensors, uh, one for each bank. Uh, in the Alpha, the four cylinder, I actually had an oxygen sensor for each cylinder. That's a little bit over the top for a uh, four cylinder, and it's really over the top for a six cylinder. But um, just having the two oxygen sensors is not enough to quell my mixture anxiety. So to quell that, I want to run six exhaust gas temperature sensors. Uh, these are just K-type thermocouples uh, and we want to mount one in each exhaust port. So the thermocouples, they just give a temperature so you can't get a direct um, mixture reading off them, but uh, they're very good for ensuring that you've got an even mixture on each cylinder. So if we've got three on one, one bank, and a uh, O2 sensor on that bank. We uh, know that the temperatures in each exhaust is the same uh, and we've got good O2 readings. We're pretty confident that all three cylinders are uh, running the correct mixture. To get it as accurate as possible, because it's a comparative thing, we wanna make sure that we put the sensor um, the same distance away from the head in each exhaust port. So we'll grab the height gauge, it's flat, and we'll scribe a line, same distance away from the head. I'll come up with some cunning plan to find the center of each tube, and then we'll drill a hole and weld in these little bungs which is a 1 8 NPT, which the little ferrule for the exhaust gas temperature screws into. So I noticed the center punch was uh, yeah, struggling to punch a center. You had one job. So I got my magnet out and it's like these bad boys are stainless steel. Uh, the mounting flange definitely isn't. Uh, no problem. It just means that this drilling may be a little trickier than I'd previously thought. The EGTs stick up a fair way off the, uh, off the top of the headers uh, and it's getting very close to the head. So um, I'm going to tack this one into place, uh, then we'll go and fit it back on the engine. I might need to tweak that angle. Uh, once I'm happy with the clearance, we'll attempt to make all the other ones come out of the same, at the same angle. That angle turned out to be 
pretty much bang on. So I just set up this little uh, this little bit of aluminium square section to uh, try and keep the angle of the next post at the same angle. Which looks like it's worked well, except now I can't get in there to weld it. On to part the second. Uh, this manifold has a factory heat shield that sits on the top of the manifold. I'd like to leave that as it is, so I'm going to come in from the bottom with the uh, EGTs. Actually would have preferred to do that on the other manifold, but uh, Alpha decided that a starter motor was more important than neat EGT placement, uh, so I had to come in from the top. In from the bottom, slight issue. Uh, again, Alpha has decided that Strangely, one out of the six exhaust uh, ports, uh, the headers, needed these uh, reinforcements, which are going to get in the way. So I'm going to have to remove that, mount the socket for the EGT, and then try and add the, uh, the bracing back in. I'll do my best to... Uh, to save the leg, but there's a very good chance we'll be uh, off to the prosthetics department for a new one. See how we go with the grinder. It was touch and go there for a while, but we saved the leg. Now just uh, carry on with the same method as last time, except this time I can't get in there with the height gauge. So I'll uh, use this stack up. This is the same height off the table as what we've done with the height gauge, 35 mil and uh, we'll mark the heights we need, the distance from the head. And they are done. Pretty straightforward little job. This one was really easy. Um, this one required a few extra steps. Uh, the angle of the tube to the sockets meant that I needed to um, remove a bit of material on the linisher, that was no big deal. And as you can see, after the extra effort spent saving our little leg, I ended up making a new one anyway. Uh, by the time we punched a hole in here to clear the socket, there was just not much material that was going to actually get welded to the, to the exhaust. And I didn't want to weld the bracing directly to the socket. Uh, pretty thin wall thickness and it's a very fine NPT thread in there and the welding just would have destroyed that thread so just quicker and easier to make up a new plate. It's all come up pretty nicely, they could do with the sandblasting, uh, that's a dangerously boring job so uh, before I fire up the air compressor I'd better take some precautions. So I may have said something about no more aluminium brackets uh, in the last episode. Uh, clearly, there is always a need for more aluminium brackets. Anyway, that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. Uh, see you next time, maybe with some paint. We'll see. Cheers.